Well, strengths, we've got 17 more strengths to go through. I know it seems like maybe we've gone through them all, but we haven't. We're only in, uh, in um, the middle of the alphabet. But uh, we're going to start with kind of uh, the next 17. And then uh, there are handouts at the back that I probably need to make sure uh, you have toward the end because we're going to do some group talk around those. But um, we'll wait uh, at that point. Um, so the, the first topic or, or strength we're going to look at tonight is, is uh, futuristic. And for those of you who've done your uh, strength assessment, if you've got futuristic in your top five, then you understand what this means. But if, if not, um, you, you're probably... It will probably help you to know that people strong in this area uh, are inspired by looking forward, right? What can the future be? They're dreamers a bit, right? But they think um, they're not just far off dreamers. I mean, they, they think strategically. As you, as you remember, the strategic thinking piece uh, is the orange piece from the plot that I showed last week at the very end where there aren't a lot of folks, right? Um, and um, these folks, futuristic folks, do uh, have visions for the future and they are inspiring enough that folks want to follow usually. These healthy descriptors, they are imaginative, creative, they're sometimes seen as prophetic uh, people. Okay, usually inspire. Of course, the unhealthy descriptor, descriptor is that they're dream, they dream too much, head in the clouds. Um, they're not, they're not practical, um, and so that's kind of the shadow side of someone who, whose strength is based in the futuristic idea. The next is harmony. Now, blue is the area of, of relationship building, and we've got tons of that in this space, okay? Harmony, everyone understands uh, what harmony means. These are consensus builders. Uh, folks with strong harmony um, don't like conflict. Um, they seek areas of agreement. Jennifer has high harmony, um, and... Um, that, that is, a, a, they're usually really good mediators, right? Um, someone who leads with harmony. Healthy descriptors, they are a negotiator, mediator. They see two sides of a situation. They're really good at asking questions. Um, they, they help build consensus. They facilitate well. Unhealthy descriptors, you know, they're wishy-washy. They're weak. They're indecisive. Uh, they don't like to make decisions. Uh, they avoid conflict. Ideation. This is uh, another one of those strategic thinking areas. Um, people strong in the ideation thing, they, they love ideas, okay? Um, and usually, it's almost like if you've got a scatter plot uh, of different things, they can pull those things together right? Um, they can find connections between the most arbitrary things. Ide people are strong uh, with strength there. Um, healthy descriptors, it, it improves on what exists. They learn quickly and they have agile minds. They think uh, quickly uh, on their feet well. Unhealthy descriptors, serendipitous. I don't know how serendipitous is unhealthy. That's a pretty positive word, but they lack follow-through, um, and, and sometimes uh, idea people just create more work, right? If you just keep having ideas at some point, somebody's got to pick something up and move, right? Yes? That be easily distracted, perhaps? Yes. I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I think they... They, if they're always on to the new idea, the next idea, I think they can be distracted by that. It's a good, good question. Good idea. Uh, includer is the next. 
Uh, this is a healthy uh, relationship building piece. Um, they accept other people, right? They show awareness of those who feel left out and make an effort in including them. Um, healthy descriptors, they invite other in, others in. They're caring, they're engaging of others, sensitive, take up for other people. Unhealthy uh, folks, is they're indiscriminate. They'll let anybody in the group, right? Gee whiz. Can't decide. They're way too generous. Their circle is way too wide, okay? Um, that is includer. Um, individualization, which seems weird as a relationship building strength, um, but they are, uh, Tamara is, uh, that came the first week, it is high on individualization. It's one of her top ten, I think. Um, they, these folks are intrigued with unique qual qualities of each person, right? They have a gift for figuring out how people uh, who are different can work together productively. So it's almost like being uh, someone who sees gifts in others well, right? And can draw a correlation between um, differently gifted, differently able people and, and get them together. A healthy descriptor. Um, sees uniqueness in all individuals, kind of intuitively knows that one size does not fit all, that there are different, you know, different strokes for different folks, that everybody needs their own thing, and, and they appreciate difference in other people. They're not looking for uh, a line of, uh, of, of toys that look the same, right? Um, unhealthy descriptors, um, Unable to synthesize when it comes to people, um, having difficulty placing a group above an individual, and difficulty in making people decisions. Um, I think uh, so many of this has to do with, um, I think, people who are strong in individualization um, don't aren't really good at picking sides necessarily. They believe in and have deep relationships, and so it might be hard um, to, to think on the group because they're so worried about what Glenn needs, right? We're, we're so worried about what John needs, okay? All right, input. Input. Um, input folks have a need to collect and archive. Right? They're always taking in info. Uh, they collect information, ideas, history, or even relationships. I like that, right? Um, they collect these things. So he a healthy descriptor of someone strong in input is that they're a great resource. They've got, you know, if, if you need the the how-to manual on your weed eater, they probably got it filed away somewhere in their house, right? They've kept it. Um, they're knowledgeable. They have really good memories. In fact, they say po folks strong in input uh, a lot of times will have an eidetic memory um, or just recall like nobody's business, right? Um, they've got my a mind for detail, they usually are a collector of interesting things, uh, and that because they know, <laughs> know things, they are excellent conversationalists. They can talk about just about any topic because they've got the book on it, and they know where it's filed, right? An unhealthy descriptor um, <laughs> knows a lot of worthless information. <laughs> so... I have no idea. I'm thinking of a friend of mine who's whip smart. She's a PhD. She's working on her PhD at Georgia right now um, in artificial uh, intelligence and education. I mean, she just, she makes me look like I play with Play-Doh for a living, right? And um, she's just really highly intelligent. And I guarantee you one of her top five is input. I don't know this for certain, but I'm going to call her after this and ask her. Um, she knows more about anything than anybody else in the... And, and I can't ever say 
you're not right about that because I don't know that she's not right, but she comes, you know, she just has so much information in her, in her head. She's not necessarily a pack rat, doesn't have a cluttered house or a cluttered barn, but um, she's always getting information. She's great at research and, and is studying kind of research now. So that's, that's person high with high strength around input. Uh, intellection. This is another one of those str strategic thinking um, areas. They are characterized by intellectual activity. Um, they're introspective and appreciate deep thought, right? Uh, so healthy descriptors, these are excellent thinkers. They enjoy musing, thinking, uh, capable of deep and ph philosophical thought, and, and they're able to, to work alone, right? Um, an unhealthy barrier or descriptor is that they're a loner, they're slow to act, or, and, and they waste time thinking too much. They're isolated. They don't really want to, they don't work well with others. Um, but these folks uh, do well in building out ideas and thinking strategically. Learners. Learner can be a strength. And uh, they have a great desire to learn and want to continuously improve. Uh, they really like the process of learning, not necessarily just what they're learning, but the fact that they're able to, right? Um, so healthy descriptors that they're always learning. They catch on to things quickly. They have a, a varied array of interests. So it's not just an interest in cars or in history or in, I mean, they are well-rounded in a lot of ways, okay? Okay. And those, that learning it excites them. Um, healthy descriptor, um, they catch on quickly. They find life intriguing. And then an unhealthy descriptor, know-it-all, right? They don't care about the results. Um, they, they learn a lot and produce a little. I don't even know what bookish means, but I guess you walk around with a book and ignore everybody. Um, so, maximizer, people strong in maximizer theme, um, focus on strengths as a way to stimulate personal and group excellence, okay? They seek to transform something strong into something superb. Um, these folks um, work for mastery, success, excellent and enjoy being surrounded by and working with the best in um, any situation. I, I had a, a group, and I think it was a CBF initiative, Doc, the best practices stuff. I think it grew out of maybe a grant uh, at CBF. But there were all these uh, groups that, uh, they called it best practices in ministry. And when I think about a maximizer, I think about... Um, Groups who, people who want to not sit around and think up something new, but they want to take everyone's best gift and deepen it, strengthen it, right? Um, make it more, um, make it, you know, um, better. And then uh, unhealthy descriptors, they're perfectionists, they're picky, nothing's ever good enough, um, always reworking the problem. Okay, positivity, okay, relationship building, <clears throat> I have to say, this is one of my top five, and <clears throat> how I like to describe positivity is, <clears throat> I don't like being around negative people, okay, um, I, there are people who I run away from, and they are people who I, I always describe I don't like being around people. Even if they won the lottery, all they would do is complain about paying the taxes. Right? You know those types of people. Right? Um, and I might, you know, I'm always thinking, you know, $300 million, how much of that would I actually take home? I mean, I get that. It's practical. <clears throat> but um, people who are, are, whose strength is positivity, they've got enthusiasm, Contagious enthusiasm, upbeat, can get others excited about what they're going to do. I feel like in a lot of ways, um, 
that's what helped me stay in youth ministry so long because those, you know, that, those can be hard days, especially day four of camp when everybody starts fighting with one another. You have to find the good side, right? Um, if not, you're, you know, you'll lose your mind. Um, healthy descriptors, enthusiastic, lighthearted, energetic, generous with praise, optimistic. Um, unhealthy descriptors, insincere. You know, you heap praise on everybody, right? You're just, you just, you don't believe anything you say. You're naive. You, you, and, and I believe, you know, I'll, I'll never forget the first time um, I met with someone in Orlando, Florida. My first full-time call was a student minister in Orlando, Florida. And I got a call from um, a gentleman who needed some help. And he was at the, lo- was at the library. And I told the business administrator, I said, I'm going to go down and meet this man. He just wants to talk. He doesn't want any money. He just wants to talk. He wants somebody to pray with him. And she's like, well, where are you going? I said, the library. She's like, John, you idiot. That's where all the, fo- all the homeless folks hang out there, and he's going to hit you up for money for two minutes in, I guarantee. I'm like, he is not. <laughs> well, I gave him five bucks at the end of the conversation. <laughs> but, you know, you, 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 try, you want to try to see the best in everybody in every situation, right? Positivity. But um, sometimes we just, we've not, <laughs> I guess for, the world hardens you after a little while. So youth ministry does too. <laughs> just kidding. Relator is another relationship building. People who are strong in the relator theme enjoy close relationships with others. They find deep satisfaction in working hard with friends to achieve, achieve a goal. These people are uh, healthy uh, descriptions they're caring they're trusting um, they're a great friend they're forgiving they're generous my wife's one of my wife's top five is a relator um, unhealthy descriptors they they live um, in cliques right um, they've got cronies they got an inner circle they play favorites uh, but the truth of the matter is relator folks really dig deep in relationship. Responsibility <clears throat> is the next. <clears throat> People strong in responsibility take psychological ownership of what they say they will do. They're committed to stable values such as honesty and loyalty. Healthy descriptors of these folks are committed, accountable, independent, trusted, conscientious. And unhealthy descriptors They're micromanagers. They're obsessive. They can't say no. They take on too much. If you'll remember, I've probably told the story already, but if you'll remember, Tamara, from the first week, one of her top five is responsibility. And until I knew that about her, um, again, I I think I told this last week. I'm sorry if I did. But um, because of the way I'm built, I'm process. I'm an extrovert. I process out loud. You know, Jennifer has to listen to me. When I pack, you know, um, she's, she's learned that over time. And so oftentimes, if, if I needed to process something with someone, I might say, hey, would you, can I just come sit down in your office and talk to you about something? And I would do that with Tamara early on before we knew this about ourselves. And she was thinking I was trying to sign her up for something, right? I was giving her a hard sell, like, I'm going to, you know, I want to try this thing out on Wednesday nights with, uh, with dinner, you know, dinners, and uh, what do you think? And she's like, yeah, I'll help you do it. And all I want her to do is ask me good questions because she's a good thinker. And so once I realized that responsibility, I think it's maybe one of her, it might be her number one, I would still need to process, but I would say, hey, Tamara, do you have some time to talk? Yes. All right, I just need to process something out loud with you. You are not responsible for any of it. I don't need your help. I just need you to ask me good questions. Yeah, no problem. So we were able uh, to get, uh, with this language, we were able to get to a place that benefited both of us uh, as colleagues. Restorative. It's an executing strength. Um, these folks are adept at dealing with problems. 
They're good at figuring out what's wrong and resolving it. Um, if you think about restoration, I mean, that's, this is it, right? These folks are problem solvers. They, they find improvement and solutions in tough situations. Unhealthy descriptors, <clears throat> uh, they always focus on the bad, right? They're always focusing on weakness. They're punitive. They're negative. They're critical. Um, but in the end, they are good at figuring out uh, where the gaps are and helping solve it. Self-assurance is an influencing strength. People strong in self-assurance feel confident in their ability to manage their own lives. They possess an inner compass that gives them confident, confidence that what they decide is right. Okay, um, These folks are self-confident. Um, they're risk takers in a lot of uh, in a lot of ways. Some folks, in an unhealthy sense, think of them as arrogant, self righteous, stubborn, hard headed. Uh, self assurance is a, a good positive strength and helps others uh, see that as well. Significance. Um, People strong in significance want to be important in the eyes of others. Uh, they are de independent and want to be recognized. So it's not that they don't, that they can't stand alone, but they also want to be recognized for the ability that they do, right? Um, so healthy descriptors, uh, they, they're always high achievers, right? They seek outstanding performance. They do things that are important, and they, they work independently, right? They're independent. Um, unhealthy descriptors, uh, some might see them as uh, recognition-hungry, self-focused, or maybe even needy. Um, strategic. People strong in the strategic theme create alternative ways to proceed, Faced with any given scenario, they can quickly spot relevant patterns and issues. This is, uh, this is another one of my top five. And I think because I'm highly adaptable and strategic, um, those can, someone who uh, is a little more uh, decisive and needs structure, I can be hard to work with, right? Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that I have to have it all the time. It just means if this situation arises, I'm ready, right? Um, there, there's always another way out, right? We're never trapped into a corner. Usually, if, I'm, if I feel trapped in a corner, it's not good. Um, but strategic thinkers can usually see a way out, right? Um, quickly spot, spot uh, other things. Healthy descriptors, these folks have good judgment, they identify risk, they make solid decisions, and they usually can plan for the unexpected. Unhealthy descriptors is that they're aloof, they're cautious, they're slow, they're introverted, afraid to act. Um, <clears throat> usually they're just thinking uh, about uh, other options. And then uh, woo. <clears throat> so this is my favorite. It's in my top five, and it stands for winning others over, okay? Woo. So anybody in the room a wooer? All right. Sister, I see you. All right. No, but no other wooers in the room in their top five. It's okay. It's, it's seven for, for Doc. <clears throat> so people strong in the woo theme love the challenge of meeting new people and winning them over. Okay? They derive satisfaction from breaking the ice and making a connection with another person. Um, uh, a healthy descriptor is that they're outgoing, people-oriented, a networker or a poor builder. An unhealthy descriptor is that they're fake, they're shallow, they don't care about deep relationships. Um, as I've learned more about w what winning others over meant for me, one of the when you get the full 34, there are some there's some forms that you can, you can print out that help you think about some things to think about. And it's not necessarily growth points, 
But to say, you know, in a, in a situation, if you're feeling like somebody, if you're a, a wooer, and you're floating around the room, and you're having a conversation, I'm having a conversation with Joy, resist the urge to move on, right? Stay with Joy just a little bit longer um, so that she doesn't think <laughs> you're shallow, right? But because my, 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 uh, my, my need is for everybody in the room to, one, know I'm here, right, and to also be, feel like that, they, that I've seen them, right, that they've been seen by me, recognized by me, um, and in turn, um, you know, this is a really comfortable place for a wooer, right, we, don't, we are not afraid to lead a workout class, to come up here, you know, I think if I handed Pat the microphone, she'd be like, let's go, right, um, so no problems with wooers, um, but you know, we can be seen as that we just hop and we're just in it for the votes. I mean, there's, there's a reason I was a really good politician in Rome and ran for school board and got elected. Because um, I know how to kiss babies and, um, <laughs> and shake hands, right? Woo, Lord. So that's, that's the 34 strengths. And again... The assessment talks about the good in us, right? Um, the assessment talks about the good in us. And these strengths point toward the things that we, again, uh, from the very first, Tamara talked about, these aren't ways in which we need to, to drag ourselves out of the, dre the dredges, right? These are things that we need to recognize about ourselves, that we need to claim and that, that, that we need to deepen. These top five are things that will make you better in everything else. Okay? Um, and so uh, that's what we're going to be about. Some of the ways that we'll do that, there's a, there is a, a packet of information in the back. I think some of you probably have them. Um, they're a description of, um, it's called Focus on Strengths. There's some that are on kind of tan paper and others on white. Um, each, of, each, each of your top five should be in here somewhere if you've done the assessment, okay? So what I want us to do with our remaining time, which we've got about 15 minutes, what I want us to do with the, the remaining time is just from where you are, um, if you're sitting at a table with only a, one or two people, maybe move to another table and make a conversation group. But what I want you to do is... Use the handout and find your top five, okay? And then from those descriptions, I want you to think about what resonates. So um, adaptability is one of my top five. It has a description, which is what we've already talked about. But there are contributions. Uh, one of the con a contribution of someone who's highly adaptable is a willingness to follow the lead of change. I can contribute that to a group usually. I need present pressures that demand an immediate response. That's one of the things that makes me good, right? I need pressure. Um, I like spontaneity. I don't like predictability. And um, in its raw form, um, which is kind of the negative side, I guess, the raw form, it, not at my best self, I'll say that, my attention span might be short, but in my most mature form, my intense real-time awareness helps me respond to situations with immediacy, right, in immediately. And so I want you to think about that list of things for your top five and tell me what resonates from that list. As you read your top five, just talk around the table with your other folks and say, you know, those are really true, or I don't know about this, right? What resonates, what's good, and then what surprises you, okay? So start at the top um, from contributions down to through mature form. I want you to read those in each of your five, and then share around the table what resonates, but also what surprises you about those things. And then the second thing we're going to do is... Look at the scripture references. What I like about this document is it gives a scripture reference for each strength. 
And so the scripture reference for adaptability uh, comes from Philippians 4. It says, I know how to live in Uh, live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So what I want you to do then is, is, does this familiar, does this verse, is it familiar to you? Um, maybe it, maybe, I know in my previous church, we had life verses. Some we gave to children as they were growing up. Some as an adult, we chose. Uh, my life verse is the Great Commission, right? Um, and um, I chose it because of my calling. But maybe you've got a verse that's always called out to you. I'd be interested to know if one of your top five, if that verse is in there. Right? That would be interesting to me. Um, And then if the verse isn't familiar or doesn't work, is there a different one that you would add? Okay? So that's what we're going to do around the table for the next 12 or 13 minutes. And then, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, to your question, so um, Pat Kerr asked about realizing her strengths um, and that uh, early on in their life together, they moved often, that she seemed r- r- uh, like it, it was easier for her uh, to do that, and th- these strengths kind of resonated there. I would say um, that you're not, you're not strong there because you lived through that, but you adapted well because of who you were, right? Um, I, it's interesting. Um, there's a revisionist history podcast right now out. Um, Malcolm Gladwell is talking about some great uh, experiments he wants to do, and one of them is about nature versus nurture. And um, he they make the argument that... Uh, Nurture is, forget nurture, right? You, your, your gene pool is who you are, and that creates who you are. So, yep. All right, I know this is fun to talk about uh, because we're talking about things that matter to us, right? We're talking about ourselves. We're, we understand ourselves well. Um, and uh, that's what's so exciting about this good work as church people, right? We understand that we are uh, God's creation, that each of us has been given a task, a calling. Some of us have lived out that calling inside walls like this 40 to 75 hours a week. Some of us have lived it out in hospitals or uh, in uh, boardrooms or um, have a life, a long life ahead of us living out our vocational call. But the truth of the matter is strength works uh, because it's who we are. It's based in who we are and who God's called us to be. And so in the, in, in the coming weeks, especially next week, we're going to talk about so you've been talking about this strength stuff for four weeks, John. What's next? Right? We're going to talk about what's next. And we're going to, not only are we going to talk about what we've been doing, but we're going to dream a little bit together. Because I think because of the scatter plot, will you show the scatter plot, Ron? Because of this scatter plot that we have that not everybody's on, to be fair, um, but most people are on, you see the... The, the variety that we have in this place, this means we are better together, right? That's what this means, that we are better as a, a cohesive unit. 
And when we share ideas and when we share life and we listen well um, to both the leading of the Holy Spirit but also to one another, uh, this church and the cause of Christ through this church is going to benefit. And so that's what we're going to be doing next week is thinking together a little bit about how to apply this um, and what we're going to do with it going forward. And I'm going to offer some ideas and get you all to react um, and kind of lay out a plan. So it's been fun sharing this with you all. Um, and after next week, we're getting ready to, to figure out why we're all Baptists. So stick with me next week and then be ready to learn about that in September. It was great to be with you all tonight, and um, I'm glad and appreciate your participation. Hope you have a good evening.